Hey guys, Bugcat7 here. Okay, it is Saturday, May 5th, 2018, and we are in beautiful Sherman, Connecticut, on the other side of Route 39, um, away from Mallory, um, another area, hiking area between Route 39 and Candlewood Lake. I showed you a few things in here, and uh, that's it, guys. That's, that's the end here. We reached the end of our journey. And I hope uh, you've seen some things that you haven't seen elsewhere on YouTube and maybe thought about some things that maybe you didn't think about before. Um, you know what my conclusion is. I think that, you know, this area was, you know, originally inhabited by, you know, some sort of archaic, you know, primitive archaic people who lived here, you know, aboriginal people of some sort, some variety, maybe not necessarily Native American, maybe some other um, human, humanoid, whatever it is, and, um, you know, maybe actually part of the pre-Columbian, you know, cultures that were here in the United States. It certainly seems likely that that would be the case. So I believe that, you know, Mallory, this area has nothing to do with settlers or colonists. We just we saw all the effigies and the strange things in the rocks on the boulders and these weird build outs and rocks that don't seem to be, you know, be able to be moved by just anybody. You need to be moved by cranes, etc. So there's a lot of stuff in these areas that suggest that it belongs to the Aboriginal cultures. And there's a, you know, one main point here, okay? If you're a detractor from, you know, thinking that, you know, there was any other cultures here or any other peoples here, and you just want to stick with, you know, the colonists and the settlers built the walls and nobody else was here and the Indians didn't do anything and the Native Americans didn't do anything, well, I'd like you to answer a question for me, okay? So riddle me this. If that is the case, okay, that all the settlers and colonists built the stone walls, all right, then explain to me why people of the same class who came from Europe with the intentions of doing the same things, being subsistence farmers or whatever you may be, uh, and they went to other states here, same class, same places in Europe. They went to the Carolinas, they went to Georgia, they went to Virginia, they went to, they went to all of these different places. Yet, strangely, there's an absence of stone walls in the areas that these people went to down south. No lack of stone. You got mountains down there and everything else. So it just seems that the subsistence farmers and these people who came up from Europe as colonists and settlers, somehow when they went down south, their minds went blank. And all of a sudden they forgot about their ancestors in their home country building stone walls and all this kind of stuff because there are none there. So if you can answer, you know, that reasonably, then, you know, okay, I'll, you know, I'll go for it. But I don't think they can. And I don't think anybody can. So in any case, that's what I think. And again, you know, watch the video I posted with the professor from Cornell who talks about these farms along the St. Lawrence producing millions and millions of bushels of whatever it was. And, you know, think about today. We have factory farms today and, you know, they have hundreds and hundreds of acres they produce. And most of that stuff we have to, either they have to pay the farmers to not grow it or trash it or everything's got to be exported, you know, in excess. So think about it. Think about the stone walls, the high level of organization, the high level of everything. Think about that. And, um, you know, that may provide us with some answers as to what these things were. The walls are runty. They don't really keep anything in. They're closed. There's all different elements of this that are inexplicable in the context of the colonists and the settlers. But if you're talking about aboriginal cultures, I mean, then some of these things might make sense because of the symbolism and, you know, their notion of nature and everything else, then it would make more sense. But the fact that you're saying it, you know, colonists and settlers, well, 
I can't fathom in some of the building things, you know, that they did, the, some of the things that were constructed. I, I just, doesn't make any sense to me why they would do that, colonist or not. But um, in any case, guys, I just wanted to show you this last little segment over here of which I call the um, megalithic giant section of this part of Sherman over here. And just take a look at this with me, if you, if you will, okay? <laughs> You have, let me get the camera here. You have absolutely truck sized boulders here, cyclopean sized boulders here, laying in piles. Okay, so you have this one over here, a big long pile of stone all grouped up here as well. Okay. You know, you have uh, boulders and stones in there that weigh as much as, like, tanks. You know, so, I don't know. Uh, we're going to take a look over here. This is a pretty little area by this bench over here. And you can see these are piles of giant boulders that go this way and go that way. And they almost look like giant versions of the walls we see everywhere. Who put them there? Did they bring a big giant crane back here that could lift boulders the size of tanks? You see some of the boulders down there that fell down there. But yet in the rest of the swampy area, which looks beautiful, you don't see any of these large boulders. Okay? So you have these big giant cyclopean sized rocks here in piles, weird piles, weird separate piles. And you know, this one in particular is very long like that and piled up just here. So I don't know what may have caused that, but I have a feeling that the rocks can't get like that unless somebody's putting them one on top of another. They're not falling out of the sky or whatever. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for coming along with me on this expedition here. And hopefully we'll bring you some more content in the future. We go up to Jimmy there in Vermont, the uh, Paleo Mountain Man, and we're gonna check some stuff out there. I'm not independently wealthy, but uh, you know, I'm gonna do my best to try to provide more content on YouTube and go to different places uh, in the Northeast and see what we can see there. Okay, guys, thanks for coming along. Budcat signing out. I'll see you the next time. Bye, guys.